Welcome to this third video introducing you to the documentaries unit that you're studying as part of your A-level film studies course. And I'm going to introduce you now to the next element I want you to focus on and explore and consider. Uh, and we're going to think about today the three documentary theorists that you need to learn and study as part of this unit. And we're going to think about these three theorists and we're going to think about how they each approach documentary and how they each make their own documentaries. And part of this is so that we can use that to shed light on our study of Sarah Polly's stories we tell. So just a reminder before we move forward, there are four elements that we need to have and weave together in our study of this unit. Uh, Sarah Polly's Stories We Tell is the central film for study. We're not there yet, but we're coming to that later in the course. We need to have the features of documentary thoroughly learned, and in the first two videos we've started exploring that, and we'll be able to extend that in our study with this video. And finally, uh, sorry, and thirdly, you need to think about the filmmakers' theories. Uh, the three theorists you're studying, the three documentary makers you're studying for this are Kim Longinotto, Peter Watkins and Nick Broomfield. And you need to know and be able to refer to up to two in the exam. The reason we do three is so that whatever question comes up, you have plenty of subject knowledge to answer any question. And finally, you need to be able to comment on the significance of digital technology. And we did touch on that in the previous video when we thought about what Winston, Vanston and Chi had to say about digitisation and construction, perhaps as a starting point. So we're going to look at them in this order, Longinotto, Watkins and Broomfield. I'm going to give you an overview of their style and then I want you to watch either whole documentaries or clips from, document, from their documentaries uh, and begin your study of those. So this will be your work uh, and preparatory work uh, in readiness to then start thinking about where Sarah Polly fits in to all of the theoretical elements that we've covered and considered so far. So first of all, Kim Longanotto. Uh, she is a British director who works in observational documentary. And if you need to remind yourself about what observational documentary is, watch the first video of this series again. She focuses primarily on women's lives. So she is always taking an approach to gender, she is often approaching things from a feminist perspective, always seeking equality. Uh, she, will often, she will look at different countries and cultures and customs and really embed herself in them. And being an observational filmmaker, she favours long takes because she wants to capture extraordinary lives. And she, wants to, and she wants to show us as far as is possible within documentary form, these unbroken realities. So. She is trying, despite the fact that she is bringing a political perspective, this feminist perspective, she does want to show us truth as far as she possibly can. This means that her films are often uniquely personal and she often thinks about society's outsiders, those who don't fit in comfortably to their societies, to their worlds. And with that, she adopts an unobtrusive style. She steps back, she, we see her allow her subjects to express themselves in the natural environments but that said her films often center on victims of discrimination and oppression and they are typically giving us strong female characters fighting for change and justice and i'm going to ask you to watch divorce iranian style and in your copy of these slides you'll be able to click on that click on that link to youtube and it will take you there she works, she's worked around the world and she's made documentaries around the world in Iran, Cameroon, Japan and the US. And you could consider just those countries as a starting point, as a list and the different attitudes to women uh, in each and every one of those countries. There is the sense uh, then that she is an outsider uh, when she goes to these cultures. She is, she is an outsider looking into a culture, trying to gain an understanding of that culture and perhaps share her learning and her findings with us. So with that overview in place, we can now begin our study. So I would like you to watch Divorce Iranian Style. It's available freely on YouTube with the link that I've included in these PowerPoint slides. I want you to note down focus sequences where you see Longanotto employ those style markers that I have just taken you through. I want you to note down what impact Longinotto's approaches have on you personally 
and on spectators more widely, so you could discuss this with the other film study students on the course and even make contact with previous film study students too. And then try and find one more of her documentaries. Are, are the two documentaries that you look at closely similar? Are they radically different? And how would you summarise her approach to her subject matter overall? Is she aggressive? Is she inquisitory? Is she, de is she gentle? Is she harsh? Does she question people? Does she just observe? So those are the sorts of things you could be asking. That list is, is not exclusive and it doesn't all apply to Longinotto. Those are the sorts of things that you could be looking at and thinking about in your study. So you need to watch Divorce Iranian Style and think where those style markers that we looked at on the previous slide, where do they come, at in, come up in the film? So our next director is Peter Watkins. So he's a British director and he's best known for his work from the 60s. Um, and you, his early work it include titles like Diary of an Unknown Soldier and The Forgotten Faces. But he was experimenting with film form and documentary form because he is a real pioneer of a mock newsreel style. And it offers a very explicit constructed version of reality. So Peter Watkins is playing with what counts as reality and how you could perhaps trick the spectator into believing they're watching something that's real. And his best known documentaries, Culloden and the War Game, which I've prepared clips for you to study, take those features and push forward with them. And he does borrow from some elements of cinema verite. You could just look that up, but we will come to study that as well. We see in terms of the features of film form, handheld cameras, the direct camera uh, address, um, and in Culloden in particular, there's this his near surreal reportage of a historical event. So Culloden, the, the battle he refers to in Culloden is a battle hundreds of years ago, but he reports on it as though it's really happening today, as well as a pre-constructed event in the war game. So he is playing with ideas about what is reality, how to represent reality. He is really playing and messing around with and experimenting with what counts as fiction and non-fiction and looking to really blur the line between the two of them. But he's always seeking for a naturalistic construction. So he used amateur actors in the reconstruction just to take away any sense of staginess or pretense. And in the war game, uh, he uses uh, and tries to recreate television programmes that may have reported on that kind of event. Juxtaposing interviews, he places graphics and titles on the screen, he puts some really dry data in, so statistics and numbers, but places that against the horror and shock of physical injury uh, within war, um, the sudden zooms. And these films, considering that they were made in the 60s, have a real striking uh, realism and immediacy to them, but equally at the same time, as I've said, have this playful relationship with uh, reality and teases us and messes around with what we consider to be reality. It did, in fact, win the war game, best the, uh, the Oscar for Best Documentary, but it was also banned by the BBC for 25 years um, because the presentation of its subject matter was considered to be too shocking at the time. Uh, and he um, Watkins is really interested in this idea of how the media represents reality. And he has kept pushing at that and kept considering what counts as reality and this almost mock version of reality that he produces is deliberately slippery, it's deliberately ambiguous, it's deliberately playful. So in the same way as you watched with Longinotto, Divorce Iranian Style, and perhaps one more of her documentaries. I want you to watch these extracts from Culloden and the War Game. And I want you, just as you did with Longinotto, to think about what defines Watkins' version of documentary. Think about the style markers I've just talked you through. I want you to think very carefully what defines Watkins' version of documentary. What traits make up Peter Watkins' style of documentary? And what does he focus on? What attitudes and ideas is he expressing? What narratives is he telling us? 
Where can you see these are constructions rather than reality? We've got two very strikingly different filmmakers here. Kim Longanotto giving us these long extended observational moments of documentary versus Peter Watkins' explicitly constructed style. So, you should now have completed an extensive set of notes defining Longanotto's approach to documentary, having watched thoroughly and extensively Divorce Iranian style as a minimum, and Peter Watkins the same again, an extensive set of notes, really carefully defining what Peter Watkins' documentary looks like and the impact it has on you. Now for our third theorist, Nick Broomfield. And this documentary maker is one you may have heard of before, um, but he is a figure and a documentary maker who focuses on the bizarre and darker sides of life. And he's, in, he's attracted to subjects who are interesting but difficult, and as such his films often cover really challenging material. Uh, he's looked at films of, uh, he's looked at South Africa, and really problematic figures like the neo-Nazi Eugene Ter Blanche, um, but equally has taken and given a version of the Hollywood prostitute Heidi Fleiss, um, as well as the as well as in, as well as investigating the deaths of two uh, well-known rap stars uh, in his 2002 film Biggie and Tupac. So his interests are very diverse and very wide-ranging, and he is unafraid of controversy. He's also really fascinating and, and interested in this idea of celebrity um, and tracking down those figures and examining and putting those figures under the, under the microscope. Um, his film uh, Tracking Down Maggie focuses on Margaret Thatcher and is a really interesting and exercise in failure uh, because he gets absolutely nowhere near her and instead starts to think about this question of celebrity and public figures and the place of public figures in society and this is one of the documentaries I want you to watch. Um, he looked at the controversial right-wing American politician Sarah Palin, uh, but equally tragic figures from popular culture, people like Kurt Cobain and Whitney Houston. Unlike Peter Watkins and Kim Longanotto, he is a figure and a character in his films. And we often see him and the sound boom in the frame, and we often see the cameras that he uses as well. So he's very explicit. He's showing us that this is always being filmed. He's a presence in the he's a presence in the film. He's manipulating, controlling the subjects, and he's explicitly present there all the time, and we're shown that all the time. And we get a persona. Broomfield gives us a persona all the time, and he is explicit about telling his stories from a subjective point of view. We don't, therefore, or we're not forced to adopt a position to fully understand what he's trying to do. Equally, the Broomfield persona doesn't mind rubbing people up the wrong way, he doesn't mind treading on people's toes, he doesn't mind upsetting his subjects and pushing his subjects. And there is a sort of charming disorganisation, haphazardness, a chaoticness to his documentary. It's as though he's responding spontaneously, but this is part of the Broomfield persona that he presents in his documentary. As we consider and keep thinking about Broomfield, there is therefore a very strong relationship established between Broomfield and the spectator. We are being encouraged to directly interact with Nick Broomfield and his experience. And it's almost part of his narratives that his experience of researching and finding out more about his subject is part of the narrative of the film. It's almost as though we're uncovering facts and truth alongside him as well. Uh, and... You know, I mentioned just a moment ago about his, his disarming, chaotic, haphazard manner. But equally, that's a persona that he uses to disarm his subjects, to make them feel relaxed about him. It's as though he wants them to, it's as though he's using that to get them to reveal interesting things about themselves. He's clearly, when you watch him and you see his films, he's clearly fascinated in his subjects. Uh, and the self-reflexive style, so self-reflexive revealing the uh, construction of the film, means that he's able to intervene and directly question um, his subjects on the issues that he's curious about, as well as sometimes turning around to us and addressing us as spectators directly as well. Uh, he often will use devices like voiceover and establishing shots, which will foreground and make very explicit his point of view. 
So this is really different to Peter Watkins. Peter Watkins is messing around with and playing with ideas about what is reality, what counts as reality, and sometimes is hiding his perspective from us, whereas Broomfield is always being very much more explicit. So I want you to watch his documentary, Tracking Down Maggie. This one is freely available on, through, through Channel 4 online and 4 on demand. If you have access to, to uh, streaming services, I would encourage you, if you can, also uh, to watch his, uh, some of his other documentaries. Curtin Courtney is, is often the most easily accessible and freely accessible one. But I want the one, the one that is freely available is Tracking Down Maggie. And I want you to watch that documentary, and if, you have, if you're able to watch others, do so as well. And I want you to think, what defines Broomfield's version of documentary? So where do you see those style features that I've just commented on? Where do you see them in particular focus sequences in these documentary films? What traits does he have overall? What would you add to the style features that I've just noted? What impact do those traits have on us? And what topics and subjects does he focus on? So now you should have extensive notes on what makes Kim Longinotto's films and documentaries distinctive and different, what makes Peter Watkins' documentaries distinctive and different, and what makes Nick Broomfield's documentaries distinctive and different. You could go back now and re-watch those films or short sections of them, and I want you to be ready to start thinking as we move forward in our study of this unit and consider the ways in which stories we tell either share or, re or reject the traits of other documentary makers. Where does Sarah Polly seem to match up with the theorist? Where is she different in a, and where, where is her filmmaking completely different to those documentary makers? And that will help us uncover different and additional meanings in Sarah Polly's film. But this part's really important. You are directly assessed on this. You have to have this deep knowledge of these three filmmakers and you have to be able to show that eventually in your essays on this documentary unit as well. This concludes our introduction to documentary and documentary form. Right now at this point of uh, your study of documentary, you have a watch stories we tell. That is important because I want you to have this and it's important that you have a theoretical grounding in all aspects and elements of documentary. So you've thought about documentary theory through uh, Patricia Afterheider's uh, extracts and uh, Winston Vanston and Cheese extracts. You've thought about documentary features and you've studied and looked closely at three documentary theorists as well. So you're really starting to think about documentaries as a whole documentary form and the next step of your learning will then be to place Sarah Polly's documentary within that theoretical context and to see where Polly is following those ideas or rejecting them and considering then the impact of us on us as spectators.